Are you employed? Uh, objection, ma'am. Would you state your name for the record, please? Your attribute for the record, please. Uh, Sean Matilda Cushman L. on behalf of the Mount Cush Empire Aboriginal Law. All right. I want to ask you a couple of questions, please. Um, the first question I want to ask you is, are you employed? Uh, objection, ma'am. This hearing is supposed to be about jurisdiction. This court has no jurisdiction. The court has no jurisdiction to determine its own jurisdiction for a basic issue in any case before a tribunal. Well, if I have trial. no jurisdiction to determine my own jurisdiction, how are you going to get that issue resolved? Listen, this, ca this case in this courtroom is a culpable, incompetent court of jurisdiction. You can't, according to federal case law, you can't set another hearing to reach and determine your own jurisdiction. As I've stated for the record plenty of times, I'm only having threat to arrest and coercion and because the prosecution falsely holds my property and I'm here to clarify that matter. Other than that, I'm here under threat to arrest and coercion. It is completely against federal case law. It has power to act and a court must have the authority to decide that question in the first instance. That's Rescue Army versus Municipal Court of Los Angeles. A departure by a court from the recognized and established requirements of law, however close a parent inherits the mere form and method of procedure, which has the effect of depriving one of a constitutional right, may is an excess of jurisdiction. May, you have the flag may, right behind you, ma'am. May I interrupt you for a moment, You please? may not, ma'am. Would you, would you, when you're done speaking, would you let me know so that I can ask a question? I'm, I'm, I'm not obligated to answer any questions, so I have no intentions of answering any question. Well, I'll ask it anyway, and then I'll ask it anyway, and you can approval. decide what you want to say. Uh, thus, where a judicial tribunal has no jurisdiction of the subject matter on which it assumes to act, its proceedings are absolutely void in the fullest sense of the term, Dillon versus Dillon. Uh, courts enforcing mere statutes, as it is to my understanding, that this is a statute, not a constitutional violation of law. In fact, one of the hearings I had with you, you said people are not charged with constitutional violations. I don't understand how you could be enforcing statutes and you have the constitution, the U.S. flag behind you, as if you don't take, you hadn't taken an oath to uphold the constitution. Courts enforcing their statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially. Thus, no judicial immunity, and unlike courts of law, do not obtain jurisdiction by service of process, nor even arrest and compel the parents. Boswell versus Otis. Pro I've been here three or four times on the threat to arrest and coercion. Prosecution doesn't even have folders in front of him. He has no objections. He has nothing to say. He cannot prove jurisdiction. This court should have been dismissed this case. This is a colorable court of incompetent jurisdiction. The fact that petitioner was released on a promise to appear, before a magistrate, for an arraignment, that fact is circumstance to be considered in determining whether the first instance there was a probable cause for the arrest, Monroe versus Popper. There's no discretion to ignore the lack of jurisdiction. Court must prove on record, all the record, all jurisdiction facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. A universal principle, as old as the law, is that proceedings of a court without jurisdiction are a nullity and its judgment there and without effect either on personal property. This case has already been put before the federal court and you will be receiving a notice of removal very shortly. This court has no jurisdiction. Prosecution can't prove jurisdiction. This case uh, shall be dismissed and it will. Did you file a notice of removal with the federal court? Yes, you will be receiving it shortly. All right. Well, when I receive it, I will rule on it. This is my question to you, however. Are you employed? I'm not employed. I'm not employed with any uh, 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 corporations uh, incorporated with the state of New Jersey. Are you, are you employed with any corporation that's incorporated outside of the state Objection. of New Jersey? Objection. I'm not, I'm not here to answer questions about uh, my employment. Uh, I, the last time I was made aware of this was supposed to be about whether this court has jurisdiction, and clearly it doesn't. Uh, a question about employment has nothing to do with whether this court has jurisdiction, so I'm not obligated to answer those questions. And I, I shall not be answering any anymore those questions that are not pertaining to jurisdictional facts. Well, this is my question to you. I asked it before. If, you, if your position is that this court has no jurisdiction, to determine its own jurisdiction. That's the objection, man. That is not my ruling. That is not my holding. I've, I've given you the federal case law regarding such. 
And maybe you can take some time out that you need to do to, uh, to recheck that, but that's what the case law says, not what I said. Well, I do have jurisdiction over you. Number one, you're here in my courtroom. Objection, ma'am. You do not have jurisdiction over me. I'm here by way of threat, duress, and coercion. The federal case law stipulates already that compelled uh, appearance and arrest warrants doesn't give uh, uh, a minister acting ministerially and not judicially enforcing their statute's jurisdiction. That's in incorrect and false. You do not have jurisdiction because I'm here. You've told me before when I was here that you would lock me up if I didn't come, which was threat to rest and coercion. I think that you misstate what I told you. Objection, ma'am. I have not misstated. I have the videos. I have it on repeat 24-7. I've seen you say it. I don't recall that I said I would lock you up. Oh, well, objection, ma'am. That's on the record. Well, you can object all that you want, sir. And I will continue to have a difference of opinion about that. All right. Well, we'll continue with today's proceedings then. And I certainly appreciate the courtesy that you extend to me. All right, Mr. Uh, Walker, I know that you are here. Yes. You wish to be heard, sir? Your Honor, I have uh, Kevin Walker appearing on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Uh, we did uh, receive after the last uh, hearing a court order directing the Office of the Public Defender to uh, represent uh, this uh, defendant. Did file a motion for reconsideration, noting that uh, there has been no indigency uh, determination, which is uh, an essential component of uh, our appointment. So I would ask uh, respectfully that uh, an indigency determination be made uh, at this time, absent that earlier order directing us to represent this defendant, be vacated. All right, thank you. Do you wish to be heard on the issue, Mr. Luciano? I don't, Judge. All right. I have inquired of Cheyenne Mutata Kushimurel concerning his employment. He tells me he is not employed in the state of New Jersey by any corporation, and therefore I determine that he does not have the present ability to pay for counsel to proceed in this matter. Objection, ma'am. Uh, I, don't, I don't know this gentleman. Uh, I haven't made any contracts with the public defender's office. Uh, I don't know what that was an attempt to do, but he does not have the authority to speak for me. Uh, so I would appreciate if any uh, non-identified parties are uh, determining to act on my behalf. First, fill out an IRS Form 56 and notify the IRS that they're acting in some sort of fiduciary capacity. All right. Let's talk about the issue of, uh, Mr. Walker, I want to talk about the issue of jurisdiction. One of the issues that has been raised in this case and has been raised over and over again that really needs to be determined before we can proceed with it is with regard to jurisdiction. I have received, it was filed with the court, it was received in my chambers on January 7th. I'm not exactly sure if it was filed downstairs on a different day. Something that has been entitled a non-negotiable affidavit of fact to dismiss with prejudice for lack of personam jurisdiction, lack of discovery, and lack of an injured party. It purports to raise the issue before the court of lack of jurisdiction with regard to um, Cheyenne Mutata Cushing or L. Uh, despite what Cheyenne Mutata Kushimir L. says, this is not an application to the court to uh, dismiss anything with anything. There are certain ways, as you are aware, Mr. Walker, to bring issues before the court. Um, what we need to do is have the issue brought before the court properly by way of a notice of motion. I don't even know if Mr. Luciano got a copy of this, but certainly you know that any motion filed has to be served on the prosecutor. How much time does your office need in order to do that? And did you receive a copy of this? As I have not received a copy of that, and uh, before I address that issue, I would respectfully request that uh, you inquire into this defendant's assets to see whether he has a present ability to retain private counsel. He tells me he isn't employed in, uh, by Objection. a corporation, so... Objection. This is obscene. Sir? I do this not is a conversation I that I'm having with Mr. Walker, not with you. This is, this and is, he the way you didn't want me man. to interrupt you, I would like you not to interrupt me or Mr. Walker. Objection. This man cannot speak for me, man. I haven't filled out any public defender's applications nor contracts to agree to that. You cannot force me against my consent to have someone who has I had no formal contract or agreement <coughs> with to uh, speak on my behalf. I'm a natural flesh and blood man. I don't what? have to have... Yes, ma'am. Oh, I do okay. not have to have uh, an attorney at law a colorable attorney at law, de facto attorney at law, uh, propose or purport to speak for me in any in, in any regards to these uh, matters at hand. 
Let's see. March 23rd, sufficient time, Mr. Walker? I think so, Judge. All right. Then this matter shall be in hereby is continued until Monday, March 23rd at 9 o'clock. Objection, ma'am. Uh, the notice of removal is already in. You will be receiving it today. So. If I receive it before March 23rd at 9 a.m., I am aware of my obligations when a matter has been removed to federal court. If for some reason the federal court does not accept it, or it's not properly filed, or there's something else, that's the next day for this proceeding. Objection, ma'am. I much. will not be participating in any more of these proceedings. Do what you want. I'm sorry, but I can do that. This is the only notice that I will give you of the proceeding on March 23rd at 9 o'clock in the morning. We don't send out letters reminding people. We simply expect that you will be here. Thank Judge, you very much. Judge, you will be contacted by uh, my office, and we'll uh, raise an interview with him in the office, and he'll have to uh, sign in. Do you have his address? Uh, I, it's on here. The address I have is the, uh, the PO yeah. box. Objection. It's right here. Objection. If you uh, attempt to contact me and negotiate any contacts with me, you will be getting sued in federal court, too, as well, sir. All right. Thank you very much.